topics of religion. I feel it's like being a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> but this is where the story starts. I was young, and I was going to church regularly. My mother, recently divorced, had found another great man in her life who's now my stepdad, and we went every single week. So I don't pop, we wake up, be in church by nine, we were promised donuts, we were never given donuts. <laughs> <laughs> but I started having sort of an existential crisis, because at the same time, I'm in junior high. And I want you guys to hold your necks for this, because I was being bullied by people who were claiming to be proud Christians and Catholics. And that just, it, it never made sense to me, and I didn't understand it. I couldn't figure out if it was because of my love of science, is it because I like to read. Uh, for some people, it was because my mother had me on a level, or my mother got divorced. That was their problem with me. And I was having this issue, and my stepfather's mother, who was a proud, very tiny Ecuadorian Catholic woman, suggested that I make time with one of the preachers at the church which I was totally down for. There was a gentleman he held every Sunday Mass. He wore vivid green tie-dye robes, except for on Easter, which they were bright purple tie-dye robes. He was off the boat Irish, very thick accent. You couldn't understand necessarily what was going on unless you read along in the book. So we made time and I spoke with him. And I told him, I don't understand this. What I understand is this is supposed to be about love and acceptance. And I'm not getting that. I'm not getting that at school. I'm not seeing that a lot when I'm in the church. People make comments about my family, and I don't understand why. And what he said to me was, Heather, as a man of God, I don't want you to lose Christ or God in your heart. But as an old man who's seen the world, talking to a young woman who's stepping out for her adventures. I don't want you to lose love and understanding. It turned out this man majored in theology in college before he went in and started his service with the church. And he was talking about how out of all the religions out there, it didn't matter if you worshiped one god, no god, or multiple gods, a lot of what their focus was on was love and understanding. And he said that it, if this is the one thing that all these religions are focusing on, they can't be wrong. So it must be important. So you must keep it. I said, okay. So I kept it. I kind of wandered a little bit from the church. I fell into Buddhism, which, same thing, following love and understanding. That's my ultimate goal in life, love and understanding. And the service after I had had this conversation with me, was actually just about that. Love and understanding and not judging. Following Matthew, can't remember the number, but there are several verses in the Bible that preach it. Love and understanding. Love thy neighbor. Do not judge, for if you judge unto me, then, and just so many things. And I'm like, does anybody ever really read this? Because this is what I want. This is, this is all I aim for. But he went on. And he said, this is the goal that you should have. This is what Christ would want. This is what God would want. And then he told this huge church of about 70 people a story about a family. One of their children was autistic and deaf. Now, how do you communicate with a child that's autistic and deaf? How do you show them 
that you love them when they can't really hear it and they, you have a hard time expressing it. So they developed a system that when they held hands, they squeezed three times. I love you. And it communicated and it worked. And of course, being at the age of 12, and my sister at the age of six, and my brother at the age of eight, we went home and we did this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Even though we moved away and we're no longer with the church, it's still something that we hold in our family. The last couple weeks, I've been having a hard time at work. Huge workload, big change. And big change is only bringing a big challenge. But I hit it head on. I feel like I succeeded at work. I told my mom, I was like, yeah, I'm really stressed. She told my sister, my sister came over. She just sat there with me, we were watching TV. She held my hand and she squeezed me three times. She goes, do you remember what that means? I said, yes, it means that I love you. She says, good, don't forget. I said, okay, but how else would you communicate this if you can't necessarily touch somebody? If you're looking across the room and the person you love is just standing there, maybe having a bad day, maybe stressed out, and you can see it. Well, my fiance came up with a we started learning sign language together. So if we're at the get together or if we're in the grocery store and I'm having a bad time and I'm stressing out, I'll look up at him and this is what he does. I love you. Or, it is very quick, I love you. And these three little words, sometimes it's all you need to communicate and to bring somebody together.